when you have left your uh, system for too long, your mealworm system, and you come back and find that you have a situation like this where you've got beetles along with uh, along with mealworms, along with pupa, all in the same uh, container. And you also have some of the exoskeletons on top and there's frass in there. I mean, you've left this for a couple of weeks and gone on vacation. There's some things you have to do to get it back to where it needs to be. And so I have set up a system whereby I can do that fairly easily. And I'm going to show that to you today. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but I wanted to show you kind of what I do to uh, make sure that I could get my containers back in working order pretty quickly. So the first thing that I do is that I have this vacuum uh, system here, and it's just a, a vacuum head that I bought online. This one is a, a Wen bucket vacuum head, and it, it doesn't come with anything but the, the top unit and the hose, and you're supposed to attach it to either a five gallon bucket or to these containers that I also bought uh, on the web. They're uh, pet food containers. And I find that it, it fits, you know, it doesn't, doesn't snap on, but it, you know, it, it can, creates enough of a seal that it protects, um, it, it protects it from blowing everywhere once you turn it on. And so I've got it plugged in right now and you can see I have it labeled exoskeletons. What I have in here are essentially all of the, uh, castings of the, um, uh, of the exoskeletons of the mealworms as they grow up because they, they molt. And when they molt, they create these, these fine, fine exoskeletons, okay? I'm sure there's another name for them. It's, it's, it's a chitin-based, uh, you know, molting. And so anyway, what I do is I first try to get that off of the top layer of the box because that creates just, it just goes everywhere. I mean, it's so thin, it'll blow around everywhere. Some people just blow on the top of the lid and they blow it to one side and then pick it up by hand and throw it away. I find that it's actually um, useful because I can put it in my garden. It's another garden amendment. And it also, uh, you know, people will buy it. So I haven't had anybody buy mine, but, you know, I'm, I'm just in the beginning processes of my mealworm farm. So the first thing that I'll do is I will take my vacuum and I'll vacuum that up. So let's do that real quickly and I'll show you how easy that is. And what I do is I take the hose and I just run it very, uh, you know, gently, kind of about that level, if you can see. I don't go all the way down because I don't want to suck up the mealworms and, and, and all of that. But I do it about, uh, about a, an inch above and I just kind of go around and, and just kind of keep it about the same height and see if I can get as much of those exoskeletons as possible. So let's give that a whirl here. And you can see it's not picking up the, the worms, it's just picking up the skins, the, the, the sheds. thing that I do now that I've got those uh, sheds off of the top of the of the container is I want to sift out the frass. This is just my methodology. I mean, you could adopt a different one, but you see all that fine, fine material in there. That's the frass. That's the essentially the, the poop or the castings of the mealworm. They can't process that any further. And so I want to get that out of there so I can put fresh wheat bran in at the end of this process. And so what I have done is I use this sifting method and I bought these off of Amazon and they're sifting pans and they come in different size meshes. You can see that they have some that are, and I bought a set. There's some that go up to like a half an inch, which I think that one is. Uh, this one I think is like a one eighth inch. And what I use is is this one, which is, uh, it's labeled GP2130. 
and I think it's a 1 30th of an inch mesh. And that allows the frass to go through but keeps everything else on top so that it will only let the, the poop essentially go down to the bottom. And then I'll take the poop in that bucket and I'll put it into my frass container, which you can see is almost full. So this is what I'm trying to get out of the, out of the uh, tray. So I'll just dump the whole thing. I'll just dump the whole thing into the top there. And I wanted to point out too, I mentioned in my first video that I use these food safe, non BPA, uh, they're heat trays. They're like trays that you would see when you go to a catering event or something. I use them for two reasons. There were three reasons actually. They're food safe, so I know that my mealworms are not going to be, you know, eating or, or getting into their system any kind of leaching any kind of uh, bad chemicals. They're dark, they're black, and mealworms and darkling beetles like dark environments, so it helps with that situation too. And width wise and length wise, it gives me enough area to grow worms in each container, but when I go to work with the container as you can see it doesn't spill everywhere it's not so wide it's not so wide as i see some people have these really wide trays well when you go to to do it like i do it where you dump into one of these containers you'll have you'll have stuff fall off the sides and it, it just gets real messy so i find that this size is real convenient i think it's considered a, a half tray i forget what the what it's called but if y'all are interested let you know shoot me a, a comment and i'll try and find out the details on this but they come in a lot of different styles some have you know different type of lips and everything i had to do a lot of research on it and i found one that really works they're not the cheapest but they work great and they're very sturdy i mean there's no there's no um uh, give to them they're not gonna they're not weak or anything so once i have it in my bucket i will just essentially shake my bucket back and forth and for those of you that have allergies i'd recommend you put a you know, a face mask on so that the frass dust doesn't come up and affect you, uh, affect your lungs. But I, I, I don't do it very, uh, you know, very rough. I just kind of shake it a little bit just to get all of that frass to fall, as you can see. I'm just trying to get that frass separated from the rest. And you can see when I do that, there's very little wheat bran left. That means that they were essentially, you know, needing to, to have more food source because I was almost to the end of their food source there. Okay, so once I have it shaken out like that, there's the frass, there's the rest. You're not gonna have any mealworms falling through because the mesh is too small. I'll then put it back in to my container, okay? And you can see the mealworms, even those small ones, they can't get through that mesh, it's too small. So I'll just tap. And another reason why I like the width of these things is it's almost the width of the mesh of these uh, sifters. So when I do this, I can kind of tap it like that, and I don't have a whole lot of mealworms falling off either side, okay? So, <clears throat> so there we have it. So I'll take, I'll take the frass, and I'll dump it into my frass bucket, and I'm done with that. So what you're left with is a tray that has mealworms it has pupa which are those white things there it has the beetles of course and you got to find a way to separate all of that out and the reason that i want to separate it is if you have beetles in here and you leave them they'll do two things they'll they'll try and find uh, a mate and and make eggs uh, and to make more mealworms and they'll also uh, search for a source of moisture because they need to uh, keep hydrated. And if they can't find uh, moisture, if you don't have carrots in there and you neglect your trays again, they're going to go after these pupa because these pupa are like little little uh, packets of, uh, of uh, essentially liquid, right? They're, they're transforming into beetles. And as they go through that metamorphosis, they're just full of liquid. And so the beetles will start to uh, attack them to get that moisture if they don't get it from another source. And they'll essentially kill the pupa. And you'll see a lot of, you know, dried up, dried up pupa like this one, you know, desiccated, completely desiccated pupa that are never going to make it into beetles. They're just, you know, they're just detritus that's in here. 
So you want to separate your pupa and your beetles as soon as you can. And that way you have just a tray full of mealworms and you can put your beetles in another, another tray, like I've shown you before, a separate tray where they can reproduce and create more eggs. And I don't want them in here creating eggs because then when I go to separate my frass and I go to put uh, the frass in this uh, frass bucket, well, you're going to one day see little things crawling around in here and they're going to be little baby mealworms, right? So I don't want any eggs in my, in my frass. So, so what I do is uh, I have used some other um, sifting devices that I've bought that are made out of wood that have slats in them and you, you can try to separate your pupa that way. But I have found that they're not effective for me for two reasons. One, they're made out of like a balsa wood and the slats in the bottom are just too flimsy and they break uh, with just, you know, no, no exertion at all. They end up breaking. And second, uh, the slats run kind of lengthwise with the sifter and I have a hard time using it inside my, my tray. So what I did is I had a buddy, uh, he and I came up with a design and he has a CAD system and he cut these out for me from stainless steel, 1 16th inch stainless steel. And you can't really go much thinner than that because the stainless steel will start to warp and it's very hard to weld. You can see he only welded them very, you know, uh, in just a, a few spots around because otherwise it, it, it burns too hot and, and you can't burn through. He doesn't have a, the right kind of welder for that. But in any event, uh, we designed this on his CAD system and it's got these slats in there that are 0.125 inch wide. That's what that indicates. And we sent it off to uh, the, 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 the design off to a place in Houston. They cut it out and then it, they sent us the pieces back and we welded them together. And it creates this sifter that I can use. And so what I do is when I'm ready to sift, I will uh, shift everything in the, in the tray to one side like that. And I'll put my sifter in here. And you can see it fits perfectly inside my tray. I designed it that way. And so I'll just start scooping the, uh, uh, the mealworms and the beetles and everything into my sifter tray. And if you're squeamish, you don't have to do it by hand. You can get a spoon or something and and uh, and do it that way. But you know, I I find this is just as easy as anything. And it's okay if you leave a few mealworms on this side. What you're trying to make sure you get are all the pupa, all the white things, and all of the all the beetles. Now, some of the beetles will will fall through the slats. Unfortunately, uh, I've played around with this you know, design a couple of times and I just didn't have the money to keep going. And so maybe in the future, I'll figure out what size would be good to separate out the beetles. But if you go too small on your slats, then neither your beetles nor your mealworms will fall through and it kind of defeats the purpose. So once I kind of have it like that, I'll just take this and I'll start to shake it. And you can see why the design of the slats being kind of horizontal instead of vertical helps me to keep this thing inside the tray and still shake back and forth and get that separation that I'm looking for. So, and you can see there. So what happens is you end up with a bunch of pupa. Now, sometimes you'll have beetles in here too, but you can see that I'm just ending up with a bunch of pupa. And the reason that that happens is the pupa have a head on them. They have this kind of alien-like <laughs> quality to them where they have this, this kind of wider part where the head is. Well, that head can't go through you know, the tail might dip down, but the head can't go through. So you end up with, with your pupa separated. And so what I'll do then is I'll take it over here to this other device that I have, that I have my buddy weld for me too. And it's just a um, kind of a, a little housing unit that I can put the pupa on top and I'll just put them on there like that. And they stay there. And he made a little lip on it for me. You can see I can rest this on there. He made a little lip on both sides, and in front and back, it's it's not as high. So I can you know kind of tap and, and get all the pupa to fall through back onto this onto this top part, and they will essentially stay there and develop into beetles. And once they turn into beetles, like this one here, they'll eventually find their way over, crawl off the edge, and they'll 
they'll try to go underneath this because it's dark and they like to be in the dark environment. And the beetles can't crawl back up this stainless steel. It's too slick for them. So it protects your pupa while they're developing into beetles from, from uh, the beetles attacking them to get to that moisture that they have inside. And so you get a better uh, rate of return on pupa turning into beetles than if you left them in your tray. And so <clears throat> now that I have this set up like this, now that I've gotten most of the pupa out, now some pupa will fall through. If the, if the pupa is, is too small, I mean, it will fall through, but I don't worry about that too much. If they turn into beetles, I come back and take the beetles out and, um, and move them out later. You can see like there's, there's a smaller beetle there that probably developed from a smaller pupa. But now that I've got most of my pupa out of here, I now separate the beetles. And so I have two buckets. And in one bucket, I will put the beetles that look healthy and well-formed. I don't care if they're smaller or not. If they look healthy and well-formed, I put them in this bucket. And once I get all my beetles in here, I will transfer them to my beetle tray. If there are any beetles that don't look healthy or don't look fully formed, I can just show you one in here that I've transferred earlier. You can see that one there. It just doesn't have, you know, it's just not healthy looking. And I don't want those genetics mixing around with my good beetles in my beetle tray. So I'll feed those to the chickens. And you're essentially left with, you know, at the end of this process, um, mealworms that are separated from everything. And now you need to add back in some wheat bran. And as I showed you, uh, I've shown you before, I have a container that has heat treated wheat bran. I buy this in bulk through, uh, through Amazon and it comes in, I think 25 pound bags. And what I'll do is I will, uh, take it and I'll, I'll, I'll in batches heat it up in my oven to 275 for about an hour. And that kills any grain mites that might be in the wheat bran because you don't want to introduce grain mites into your colonies. It'll kill your beetles. It'll kill everything. So I heat treat it, and once I heat treat it, I put it in this container, and I keep the remainder in a, in a chest freezer in my barn. And then when I'm ready to use it, I know that that wheat bran is good. It's not, um, not going to have grain mites, and so I'll just add in that, that, that fresh wheat bran to my tray, and I'll add in about, you know, probably like six of these scoopers full and, uh, and just fill it up. And finally, I'll, I'll add some... Uh, uh, carrots to the top as a moisture source. And of course the beetles will eat those carrots fairly quickly and, and devour them. So you've got to, you know, keep adding carrots every, uh, every week. And so that's essentially what I do to keep my beetles trays, uh, healthy and, you know, protected from, uh, from problems. And I just wanted to show you when you put the carrots in, what happens. I, I put some in one of these earlier, and I was going to show you how quickly these, these beetles will just devour everything. Here's, here's one right here. You can see they just they swarm these carrots. You know, these are the mealworms swarming the carrots. The beetles will do the same thing. I mean, this was this morning, and already they're, <laughs> you know, they've taken it and just chewed it all up. So you've got to change these things out periodically because they, they go to town. They munch on these things for, for moisture. Um, and so that's essentially what I do. That's how I process my trays. Again, I don't like to wait until they have, you know, pupa and beetles running around, you know, pupa, you, you, you can't help. I mean, the, the mealworms are always changing into pupa, but you need to sift those out as, as soon as you can so that you don't have the problem of trying to, you know, trying to get these little thin beetles. You can see the beetles are, are really thin. And, you know, when they're that thin, they'll fall through those slats and then you have to, you know, separate them by hand. So that's it in a nutshell. That's kind of what I do with my mealworm farming system. Uh, it's a lot of work. Better if you don't wait till like I did till you're, you've got all three things going in the same tray. Uh, better to keep on top of it, probably weekly, separating your your pupa from your mealworms, and also if you need to, separating your frass and adding more wheat bran. But I just wanted to give you kind of a, an update as to how I do it here. I'm sure there's other ways that you can do it, but this system has worked well for me and has kept things humming along nicely. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to, uh, to write those below and I'll try and answer them. And if you wanna see something different about my mealworm farming system, let me know that as well. So until next time, take care. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up below. You can also check out one of my other videos here and stay up to date by subscribing to my YouTube channel right here. Until next time, I'll see you on the ranch.